right, so now it's time to get this carburetor back in place. So we can take our our uh, choke lever here. And that just gets pressed back into the hole there. Until it locks in. There we go. And then the fuel line gets pushed back in over there. Here, let's make this a little easier. Press it on a good amount to ensure it's not going to come off. There you go. So let's refeed that and remount this thing. So let's go back to our gasket here that we started with. Make sure you put it on the way it came off. Like so. Actually, I'm doing something wrong here. I got it upside down. There we go. That's going to be a little, a little tricky to have this gasket held in place while we get everything together. So what we'll do is we'll hold it in place there. We'll take this bracket that was mounted here, and then we'll take the studs, run them all the way through, so that all the things are held together and lined up properly. Everything down in inside this is the tricky part about the whole thing well yeah you know we also can't forget about this flip down here This is proving to be a little bit cantankerous. I think that one finally got started. Oh, and that one felt like it just grabbed. Make sure our fuel line is in place and not pinched. Make sure this rubber bracket is seated down where it needs to be. Before we tighten these up, I'm going to put these two screws in. <coughs> Remember on this side, there's that wire connector. So you'll have to go through that wire connector. That is the ground for the ignition so that when you actually shut your engine off it grounds out the engine and things shut off when they're supposed to shut off okay snug those up we'll finish tightening these up Just 
snug them up. No need to crank it super tight. I do have a little extra slack here in my fuel line. And what I'm going to do is grab my forceps and pull that extra slack into the tank. There we go. Make sure there's no kinks or anything in it. Looks good. <coughs> now we'll go put this part back on. These two 10 millimeter nuts. Well, before we do that, put the uh, linkage back in place now over on this side this is where the throttle gets connected kind of feed it back into the hole there set it back in like this make sure it works okay make sure the choke works okay now let's get the rest of this back together. Now, just a thought here. One invaluable tool I found in small engine repair is one of these magnetic pickup tools because these little parts you know they drop in it's hard to get at them well guess what there you go got it back it has saved me a lot of time now if I drop it on my garage floor that's a whole nother deal then it might be lost forever. So just snug these up. It's just plastic. You don't need to crank it real hard. I'm going to get the air and clean out the air filter here a little bit. up here it's a flathead screwdriver Now, I'll pull this uh, spark plug just to look it over. I know it ran earlier, uh, but I just want to check, see what the spark plug looks like. If it looks kind of shady, I'll do my friend a, a favor and give him a fresh one. All right, so I pulled the spark plug out. The spark plug looked really good. And uh, so now we're going to just uh, <coughs> put this back together. Everything looks tucked in the way it should be. All right, cover back on. Put some fresh gas in it. We'll fire it up, see what happens. Alright, so now I put the cover back on the chainsaw and uh, put some fresh gas in it. Let you try to give it a start, see what happens.
good sign. So what's happening here is that uh, it's not backing off on idle, it's uh, running way too fast. And I also put my tachometer in there uh, on it. This tachometer goes up to just shy of 20,000 RPMs where um, this, uh, this chainsaw the specs say that it should be running at about 13,000 RPMs in high and this one was about 13,300 so not too bad uh, but clearly you know, I took my finger off the trigger and the chain was still spinning pretty fast so what we're going to do now is the small hole on top here that's the, uh, the screw that backs off the pressure that's on the throttle so um, We'll see if we can back that off a little bit by doing that. So it needs a small Phillips screwdriver, like a number one Phillips. to uh, turning this back off is if the chain is turning while it's idling that's too fast so what I did is stuck it in here and then backed off the, uh, the throttle screw just a little bit until then the chain stopped spinning but I still would like to um, adjust the needles a bit um, to uh, accommodate the, the high speed needle what happens there is when you're pulling the trigger and it's full speed ahead if it bogs down at all that means it's not getting enough fuel and you want to open that screw up just a little bit further you know I think uh, we had it at two and a half um, and then the low idle screw was so that when you take your finger off the trigger it will actually just idle without stalling so that was at one and three quarters so it, it seems that they're okay um, Maybe it's an older unit. Maybe I can't get it any better than it is, but I'll tweak it a little bit. But that's basically what, what I've done to service this unit. And uh, I'll tweak it a little bit, like I said, a little bit more, but I won't bother doing that on camera. But just I showed you the basics then, how I how I took it apart, changed a fuel line, um, rebuilt the carburetor. Um, and I pretty much did the same thing with the 137. So thanks for watching.